folks, tonight to a little bit of something extra, a look back into the vault. Our first seven episodes, well, took place somewhere else, a place that no longer exists. So I decided, you know what, let's chop up those first seven episodes, let's look at the best, and in those first seven episodes, I had three amazing interviews. One, with my At The Show co-host, Jumper. Two, from the Ass Podcast, All Sports Scene, Sam. And three, from the Bums, Johnny. So please, sit back, take a listen to all three really amazing deep cuts into music, which you will only find here. And please, look out for the new episode that is coming this week. You know, in middle school, you could talk to anybody about music. And as long as you're open-minded, man, conversations could really, 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 really flow. So what I wanted to get started here first was let's get started with uh, what you've been listening to lately. Oh, man. So um, I listen to all sorts of music. Uh, Not really in the country, but my wife is early in the country, so she kind of got me into that. But lately, I've been listening to a lot of 80s um alternative rock so Ooh. alternative uh, like electro rock so i would really got into depeche mode oh listening to a lot of them and then i started watching their live performances and then i went in from there and i got into the rabbit hole the cure oh. <laughs> i was going down that rabbit hole listening to the it, they are so awesome the cure is like oh. and so many people don't know about the cure today I mean, they know them as an older band i i highly recommend you checking them out um but yeah listening to her old stuff and then kept going die uh, lower and just I like, got in more into like Sid Vicious and the Sex Pistols. Yes. And so I got from there and then it just spiraled into like that old classic rock. So I've been going down like the whole deeper and deeper into like different music this yeah. week um, just because I've been working on I program a lot. So I listen to music while I program or if I'm just doing something for school, I listen to it while I'm doing it. So it's just something that like relaxes me. I totally agree with what you're saying, how it's kind of a conversation starter. But also, you know, people consider math maybe the universal language because it's numbers. Music is another one of those things because you might not be able to speak the language, but you, if you love the melody and the sound, um, that's something that you guys can, you know, have in common. And we see it throughout a bunch of languages. I mean, a lot of people don't understand Spanish music, but they listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that, man. I definitely agree with that. You know, and back to what you were saying about both the Pesh Mode and the Cure. Mm-hmm. I've spent, oh my God, hours going down the rabbit hole of both of those bands. And you are 100% on target. Um, I'm actually really upset about myself. Well, I'll start. I, I've always been into Depeche Mode. Um, I remember growing up, um, my dad bought the Violator tape three times because it kept wearing out. Um, but even bands like like Deftones, when I would listen to them and look at who they listen to, that's a big thing for me. And I can get into it with anybody when someone's like, I don't like this band. And then I'm like, what band did they like? And they're like, well, that band. And I'm like, you got to like sometimes what they liked or to get on that same wavelength is kind of how I, I think about it. But back to The Cure, when I was like listening to more metal, man, I of course, that was anti-metal. And man, I look back to those days and I am so upset because I would have gotten rid of a lot of that metal to listen to that Cure. Because I mean, I would play in bands and try to, mimic the heavy stuff but when i look back to those days i would have rather been playing the cure man cure's awesome yeah just the melodies and whatnot like it, i mean it's good that we're older now so we can kind of go back and listen to the yeah. old stuff uh i mean we consider old stuff but just like generational things like the cure is like when people think of alternative rock and like the gothic rock they tend to think of smashing pumpkins yeah but the cure to me are like the first band that started besides the misfits of course and punk but like one of those first depressing bands that I call it. They're like that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's fair. And that's what the they're cure is I mean, it's, like, it's been, you know, I mean, I think that one Saturday Night Live sketch when they're in the basement and they're all in the goth yeah. stuff, you know, I mean, that's the, you know, that's the seeds of that are in the cure. But like, that's just crazy. But you kind of sometimes look at some of those lyrics too. And what I love is like juxtaposition when like mm-hmm. they do have more songs that are a little bit more up uppity but then you look at the lyrics and they're more dark which is i like that you know it it makes you think that you're feeling good but the reality is is that the lyrics are 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 more darker i mean a perfect example too is uh pump up kicks that everybody loves 
And like, is everybody at River listening to the lyrics of that? Like what it really no. is saying? No, no, probably, probably, probably not. Um, just before early, earlier tonight, uh, Depeche Mode's actually got a new album coming out. I don't know if you've heard the new single yet. It's no, it's I pretty, haven't. It's pretty good. Um, they were just uh, on James Corden, I guess, this week, and I listened to it. I mean, those live performances, man, um, really, really, I could see you going down those rabbit holes because they're yeah they're so good. Is uh, did Andy Fletcher work on this one? Because I know he passed. Uh, no, he. Me. This is like right after he passed. Like okay. you could hear in the new song, it's. I hate to say this because it always happens, but mm-hmm. when you have a member pass and then you got like that member passing song that sounds like you know you're honoring him which Mm -hmm. is awesome and the song's really good that's kind of what i think this album is is just kind of like how they're getting older and unfortunately people are passing away they're they're iconic man and really they're coming into town i wish i've seen them twice but i would love to see them always love to see them again so uh i just had this discussion with my coworker. um I was supposed to see them uh, in 2006. They were supposed to come into Tinley for a Tweeter Center. And um, the lead singer got uh, laryngitis and they had to cancel. So that was the only time I actually was going to go see them. I think they're coming in March, March, I think, March or April this year. Yeah, I think it's one, one of those. I think it's right after opening day they're coming in. Uh, I would love to go see them. I just don't have the time. <laughs> that's the pro- That's honestly. That's why we're doing 30 minutes. I'll be honest. Because, <laughs> you know, honestly, time, time is time is and that's why honestly it's almost like it's cool to to do stuff like this because it's like the old days you could have a quick 30 minute conversation and then got other stuff we got to do you know and Mm -hmm. that's you know back to you know going down that rabbit hole Sid Vicious I mean did you ever see that movie really quick uh Gary Oldman Sid Nancy a long time ago yeah um but again um he does a really, 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 really wicked version of my way that I've listened to quite a lot. That's uh, it's, it's pretty good. But I'm big into the Misfits. I mean, that was a lot of where I got started and stuff like that. But you know, really, that's some some good stuff you've been going down, my man. Really, yeah, really good. Um, Misfits is kind of like my wife's territory. My wife's more of a she likes punk, hmm. um, and country, which is kind of funny. Me, uh, like I'm totally like my upbringing in music is kind of weird because, uh, my grandfather, I, when I was younger, I used to hang out with my grandfather. So he used to watch me when I used to go to school. I, he listened to all the oldies. So, you know, Smokey Robinson, um, the Four Tops, Otis Redding, Dion, Fats Domino, Sam Cooke, stuff like that. So I got into that with him. And then my dad and my mom, they're a little younger. They had, you know, we were from a generation where your parents had you and they're in their early twenties. Yeah. And my dad was a DJ. So my dad freestyle uh, did a lot of freestyle de- um, mixing. So Stevie B, Lisa Lisa, you know, um, Julian Jumper Perez, uh, those kind of music, those mixes is what I used to listen to growing up. And my mom still listens to them today, which is kind of funny. Hey, so yeah. You know, you like yeah. That's awesome. You I like grew up like on the, those mixes too, too cool, Chris. My dad actually knew Julian Jumper Perez. Oh, um, Tim cool. Schulmer, like DJ Rendezvous, Lalo. Like those were like the stuff I like to listen to, so I know a lot of that music too. Um, but when I first heard, like um, "One Hot Minute," is what got me into the Peppers, and that was kind of post, you know, John. John left because yeah. he got into it with Anthony, which is really funny because really quick, I, I'm wearing my Lollapalooza '97 shirt. <laughs> so where's my "One Hot Minute" shirt, man? And I think I got it down to like it was like a cutoff tee, but man, I love that shirt. I, I yeah. like that album too. Um, it, it, but strange because everybody's like, oh, what, what got you was a blood sucker sex man. I'm like, no, it was one hot minute. And I like Dave Navarro with Jane's Addiction. I actually thought he did a nice little job. I just, I think they're just at a point in their lives they couldn't be together in the band. Well, no, like, you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, but like, that's what made me fall in love with them. Then I started listening to their older stuff. Now, and, were you, now, were you listening to this while it was coming out or was it like a little bit later after it had been? It was, actually, it was around 95. My friends came out. I listened to that. And then gotcha. uh, "Walk About" was one of the songs I really liked. Gotcha. Um, actually, got the I like it so much. I got all, all their albums on vinyl besides uh, "Stadium Arcadium" because that that one's like two hundred dollars. <laughs> but <laughs> that, but uh, is, that, is, that one is expensive. Yeah, "Warped," "Aeroplane." You know, those were like the songs I listened to a lot. But "Warped" um, was "Warped" was really good. I like that song. But mm-hmm. it wasn't. It was different than for Shanti. Definitely, I agree with you there. And that's what everybody like. Um, not to go on a rant, but everybody's like, oh, you know, they're always 
you know, transitioning and whatnot. Like I, I rather had the, the to me the Peppers went from like a hard rock band, like the alternative rock band, to then they start incorporating funk with George Clinton, and then they, you know, kind of experimenting a little bit, you know, outside. Flea's a nationally trained j- jazz p- trumpet player, so yeah, you have that, and he taught himself. LL taught him how to play bass, so you have that, you know, that aspect of classical music and classically trained music, and then you transition to more of the grungier Jane's Addiction, adding in Dave, and then you transition more back to John, and like. John's melodies with Flea are probably the best, but I do like a lot of Josh's stuff with them. Josh Cliffhanger. I like those. I like I really um well I like the ghetto I like the getaway a lot. The yeah, one before that I liked um was it B it's B here. What's um, the I'm with you. It? Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. And honestly, when uh, I'm with you came out for for a couple months, me and my wife, we lived in California. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I'm not gonna be cheesy right here, but I felt it. I felt that Chili Peppers in California listening to it. And I always, before going to California, felt like, is this just some cheesy, like the Beach Boys? Like, you no, man, when you're out there, you feel a little bit of those vibes. I always think I play the what if game with the Chili Peppers, the Hillel Slovak what if game, because he was a big, integral part to the band. And when he passed That's away, it. you know, you often think in times like that, like in other bands, when the the member passes and you have to replace him what would that band have sounded like do you think they would have i mean obviously funky they were funky but when he was in the band but he was a good guitar player really good guitar player yeah and you know that's kind of like where their chops got started and it's kind of funny because they transitioned to john when he passed yeah because they thought they were going to break up then and then yeah. when john left the second time they thought they were going to break up again before they had josh come in yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So that's it's just crazy. I, I I think they're they're evolving. Uh, their last two albums were, like, it's something different. It's nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, you have some some of the throwback riffs in there and, and rhythms, but it's something different. I, and I like a band that try. I mean, they what else do they have to accomplish? They're already in the Hall of Fame. They sold millions of records. Try something new. I'm glad. I always like. I like. I think everybody always needs a break, and I always mm-hmm. like it when you come back. That's how mm-hmm. I always feel. Like I'm not. I, I know that people need breaks, you know, and I think about this a lot with TV shows too. Why don't you take a break instead of just calling it quits like for five years and bringing it back kind of like an album instead of like, it's over with, it's done. And I think, you know, the Chili Peppers, they're resilient, man. They're really resilient. Yeah, they take that five-year gap in between albums. But this last, these two double albums, like you said, they weren't bad at all. I mean, they're chilly. I mean... I have a problem, and I've been this way since Metallica when they cut their hair. I, I, I never give up on a band ever. I mean, it takes a lot for me if I like you to say, "Ah, oh, you're not any good anymore," because I always feel like the seeds are sown into into the music. Um, you know, deep cuts too. You know, Chili Peppers. Like, yeah, ooh, we've talked quite a lot. They got a lot of good deep cuts. Yeah, Havana Maid's a good one. Uh, Hang the Noose is another good yeah. one. Yeah. Uh Quincy Quintile Elixir is another one. That's a really good one from um California Cation album. Yeah. Uh, the bicycle song. Like uh my favorite album from them is uh by the way, I think that's their to me that's their best album, not lyrically but rhythmly. Uh, I love the way the whole album flows. Uh, it has a lot of hits on there that are outside of Can't Stop because people everybody loves Can't Stop. One of my favorite songs is a minor thing. That, minor was, that, song too. that was the song that like when that album came out, you know, um the first track was the first track on the album, which is escaping me right now. I know. You by the way, know, yeah. By the way, the song, and then they did something on MTV and they played Minor Thing, and that's got a pretty good groove. It's just like on Californication. I mean, there's I like a lot of the later tracks on the album because everyone's so into the ones that they always play on the radio. Yeah, that's actually, why I um, like to get away from that. Fortune Faded, which came out on their Greatest Hits, is actually a deep cut from my. By the way. Um, my favorite song on that album is actually "The Place" because it talks oh, about um, his drug addiction. But really, something good new. lyrically to mm-hmm. explain a lot of that stuff. He's mm-hmm. been really good that 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 way. Inspirational. Yeah, it's, in a way. it's funny because uh, Swole, you know, is a huge pop punk guy. Yeah, he always gives me shit for the Chili Peppers. Like, oh, you gonna talk about California? I'm like, the, the, you guys, that's like the things you guys hear. But like his other stuff is not. It's like just like California related. A lot of it, you know, has symbolism in California because that's where they grew up. I mean. How many times have you heard somebody represent Chicago in rap or music? I mean, 
regardless if you you know it's a lot of people like to dog let's say a band like acdc mm -hmm. they say oh they sound the same every song sounds the same if you go down a rabbit hole especially with the older songs you'll find the rhythms changing even if it's a sliver okay mm -hmm. that's what they do intentionally i mean and it's just like the chili peppers it's what they're good at you know it's but they are also good at doing a lot more one of my favorite songs, which is, it's one of their singles, but it's Breaking the Girl. For the reason of that drum breakdown in that song is completely different than anything I've heard at that time. And, you know, they're good at stuff like that. You know, they're good at coming up with, even with on the new album, I know it's sounds Chili Peppers like, but I, I like Black Sun quite a lot. I know that was the first single, but... When it kicks in, man, it's the Chili Peppers, and people want to hear the Chili Peppers. Yeah, I really like Eddie on the newer yeah, one. That's a good that one. one's a good, a good tune, one especially since considering it's uh, representative Eddie Van Halen. Um, you like Van Halen? Yeah, my, it's another band my dad liked, so oh, Van Halen was always listened to. That's uh, been Daily my big Rock. rabbit hole band actually the last couple of weeks. But I've, I've, I've. I've who do you? Me, um, where do you go on? I'm sorry. Uh, no. Who do you? Who prefer Sammy or or? Uh, Daily Roth. Ooh, this is another long rabbit hole question that I can go down <laughs> forever. I think Sammy is a hell of a whole lot better singer, but mm -hmm. of course, the music that they made with Dave is just freaking iconic. I've again both got the honor to see them both live. Um, I mean, I, I love Sammy, man. Like, if I could hang out with somebody in the world, Sammy would be in the top 20 people I would hang out with at his bar or whatever he wanted to go because he's just supposedly just a really cool guy. Dave is David, David Lee Roth, you know what I mean? Yeah, Simon but Dave. How about you? I like Sammy. I, I love Dave, but I think Sammy just has a better uh, catalog of music. He, I mean, I, I think mean, they were a little more interesting. Uh, uh, Humans Being fan that was on the mm -hmm. radio recently. That's a mm -hmm. good jam. But what's your favorite? Uh, Van Halen album. Well, for 1984 is probably my favorite one with them. Um, but I do like a lot of music. That's because that was the one I listened to a lot when I was younger. But I do like stuff with Sammy. So it's um, my favorite track off of uh, 1984 is "I'll Wait." I probably played that song. The keyboard in that. I'm a big keyboard guy. Bass, keyboard, drums. That's that's my favorite things about music. Which is crazy because when I was a kid, it was like a, I wanted to play the guitar, which I'm upset because I wish I would have maybe did bass or keyboards or something. <laughs> uh, uh, I never got to play the keyboard. I played uh, uh, saxophone. I played in high school, and then I taught myself to play set, so I could play oh. drum set. My brother right. can play all the other stuff like trumpet and nice. My wife actually plays the guitar, which is kind of funny. Hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's I regret. <laughs> Actually, just a little while ago, I brought home a little, like, it's like a little uh, ukulele. Hmm. And then what I'll do is I got, like, every, my daughter loves music, so I'll just put on a song or whatever and then try to play it to the ukulele <laughs> on the TV, even though I don't really know what I'm doing. And then she yells at me that she wants to give it back to my wife because <laughs> I'm not doing very well. But that's always, that's that stuff's always fun. What kind of bands do you think are, like, who's an overrated band that you just don't like? never really liked so not i don't think they're overrated it's just not i'm not really into them and uh soul's gonna kill me but i don't really like blink 182 i i try to get into them like i i try to get into fallout boy i can't get into fallout boy like i just, i don't know just something about their music just doesn't resonate with me in terms of like I, it's okay it's not horrible i've heard worse but it's just not something like i'm gonna seek out you know, I mean, yeah. as like LBC was really big when I was in college, uh, mm -hmm. Lucky Boys Confusion. Yeah. And I would prefer them over Blink 182. <laughs> That's just my view of it. It's odd for me because mm -hmm. there's a time period and somewhere again around here, I have my Blink 182 shirt, um, which is odd because in this same time period, I mean, it's like Pantera. Mm -hmm. And then I'm listening to Blink 182. Now, I got into them before at dude ranch the album before they really 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 got big and then i went to the warp tour i think they were at a q101 jam a q101 jamboree i saw them at but then as their albums seemed to progress i i liked actually some of the more mature stuff it's even like this new song i don't know if you've heard the newest track that they've released i don't like 
if the comparison, let's say, to the Chili Peppers would be that they sound like California, I don't like that you're trying to sound young again. I, I want mature. I want to mm-hmm. hear what you sound like now. Um, but if you're trying to, I guess, appease to your fan base, I mean, you're going to probably do, you know, something more of what you used to do. But uh, yeah, I don't see. It, it's not that I hate on them. It's just not my type yeah. of, you know, it's not my bag, you know. And like you're saying, you appease your fan base. Like people shit on Dave Matthews, man. And I'm not the biggest Dave Matthews fan, you know, lover, but that guy has a following like no other. And like, he's a jam band. Like that's his thing. And that's what his fans love. And that dude has everything from trumpet to sax to tuba in his damn music. So you have all that. And it's like a jam band session. And people like that stuff. And I'm very, I'm very excited because down the road, hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll... Young Perker, he will come on here, and I'm excited to hear him rip Dave Matthews because you know what? <laughs> Honestly, I've again, I remember in '94 when What Would You Say came out. It was on MTV, and it was like What Would You Say, and then it was Freedom by Rage Against the Machine, and they were playing back and forth, and it's like this is awesome, heavy, and then it's like What Would You Say, and then it mm-hmm. was like that wasn't me at the time. Mm-hmm. But then as I got into college, I met somebody who was. He was in the first year of the Dave Matthews membership, and he had f- uh, top. He got to be in the top five rows for any Dave show he wanted to go to. He took me to like six or seven. Man, you ever go into the top f- four rows to any major band playing in a in a major stadium? You're gonna walk away saying this is pretty mind blowing. Especially drummers, like you said, and saxophone players mm-hmm. and guitar players. I walked out of that that place respecting that band. Um, I do get though what people don't like about them. And it really, honestly, for me, it would come down to his voice. A lot of people, (laughs) it could be sometimes a little overbearing, but then I grew up in a household where my dad said, which, uh, which I, I yelled at him when he said this, but he was like smashing pumpkins, cool fucking name, real (laughs) bad voice. And I'm like, well, you know, I I mean, that's your opinion, dude. Cause you know, you like Depeche Mode Violator, which, which, (laughs) you know, the levels, it's pretty much opinion based, but. But it's kind of funny. People like rip on Dave's voice and I'm Vince very, but, and all like putting the cards on the table, it's kind of sounds a lot like, um, Pearl Jam, his voice. Yeah. And it's very similar. And if you listen to it, especially on Jeremy, like, you can hear a little Dave Matthews, man. It's not, and I'm not the hugest Pearl Jam fan, but it's just like, come on, man. Like, I don't what's know. What's your I, feelings? What's your feelings on the whole? What do you like? Do you think? What do you think of Stone Temple Pilots? I think they're good. Uh, uh, do you like uh, the comparisons with them in Pearl Jam? I mean, I think they have differences between them. Um, mm-hmm. Both great lyricists. Yeah. Um, one gone too soon. Yeah. Uh, I think like I think at that time there's like a lot of what they call cookie cutter bands, and I don't think they fall into that. No, I they think, don't. Um, when you look back to especially the first three, four albums, no, not mm-hmm. at all. Like, I think Eddie from Pearl Jam is more of a, a serious lyricist in terms of you know depression or yeah. you know going through emotions, and you know Scott Whalen from is is something like a little more. He tries to be a little more upbeat. But they're, but they're so they're they're so good both of them. I can't really find any bad things between them. No, um, I mean even though like I said I don't, I'm not a huge Pearl Jam fan, but like I don't think that they deserve the the, the pack that they're one's ripping off the other. Well, no, mm-hmm. I mean you know that's that's any band that puts in time. I mean, there's no way you could sound. I don't know, but that's a lot of those. There's a lot of like newfound glory. <laughs> you think they sound like fallout boy you know what i mean like they don't but see they... again that's another like time so- sound of the times like yeah that's Which just is funny because i wrote down here you know through our era of growing up you know there was a huge in the 90s a huge ska movement there was the huge electronic movement mighty mighty There's... boss tones <laughs> yeah <laughs> mighty mighty boss tones there was that uh what I mean, was it like show big band it was like uh squirrel nut zippers and like uh yeah it's a whole big band uh cherry pop and daddy's yeah uh, cherry big bad Bo- and daddy, big bad voodoo voodoo daddy. daddy. like but you even know, if you want to go with ska like um no doubt was a ska band yeah and they're inspired by uh madness yeah so true. i mean just because you start there doesn't mean that's what you're gonna be they evolved to something totally different and that's another band i like you know for a female lead singer oh very um very. 
another one I like that nobody really talks about that's kind of like an alternative grant is Guano Apes. Have you ever heard them? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, a little very underground, not not yeah. as known as as other stuff. Um, yeah. That sax stuff, man. Though it's it's in some of that ska. You know, I, I like I like to listen to a lot of like of. There was a band I like Voodoo Glow Skulls. They were called. They were pretty good. Um, you know, like you said, I like to go back to that stuff too a little bit and sometimes mix mm. it in with the Depeche Mode. See, I'm really I love listening to so much, so you could mix it all up and stuff. Yeah, it's like all over the place for me. Like I could just um, fits in the tantrums. You ever heard them? They're kind of like oh. uh. They got kind of like that big band feel to them a little they more, do. but they're a little electric. Electric. Uh, you know, they change their sound a lot. I listen to them. Uh, Glass Animals, which is kind of funny because Glass Animals in the last couple of years got really famous. Uh, they were nominated for a Grammy in an album they they released like in 2014, <laughs> which I thought was weird. So, but they're pretty decent. You know, of course, I love the old school Santana, uh, Foreigner. Um, <sighs> I this love week, the this week. Have you ever heard the Santana song uh, "Dance Sister Dance"? It's like nine minutes long. I love you. You get me. I can move all day long at a place dancing yeah. to Santana. Man, I love Santana. Yeah, open invitation. Um, got nobody to depend on. It's a good oh, tune. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I like uh, I like Foreigner a lot. Another like old school seventies band. I think their um, first album was probably one of the best out rock albums to come out for a debut. Um, really awesome album. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> The, the the song never back to deep cuts the last track on that album mm-hmm. it's called i want it's i want you it's really a really a heavy good song i like foreigner a lot too yeah they're like uh one of the bands i really got into and then you know i like the eagles oh yes i know people some people don't like the eagles i really like the eagles i think I like they the have eagles. a great sound i love um another person glenn fry gone too soon very and you know, and then recently, like more evolving, I got into Broken Bells. If you've ever heard them, oh yeah, you got the Shins and yeah, uh, Danger um, Mouse, yeah, oh, yeah. So, which I think is another unique sound. Like their stuff is really nice. Um, well, that's why I really like the Getaway because Danger Mouse produced, yeah, because he getaway. produced it. Was, and the best part good. is, he went into their sessions, and whatever they were doing before, he said this shit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and like Anthony Kiedis spoke about this openly that. You know, they clashed a lot and the, the way they were making the music, he said, but I respect the hell of him because he told me how it was. And I think we made, the product came out better than what it was Yeah. Uh, because of that. And he's like, sometimes you got to be told, like, what you're doing is not that great. And he goes, that's a good thing about having him. That's the truth. You know, and that's, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I really kind of, I like that road that they were on with him. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying that they, I wish they would have continued a little bit down that road because I think that was kind of a little bit of a different sound for them that they were a different way. But I also get, I also get why they're doing what they're doing now. Yeah. And I guess, you know, when Josh left, he had an interview um, about the lead, you know, how, how he got let go and whatnot, but he said they recorded a, well, they wrote a whole album and recorded some tracks from that album that basically got scrapped. So I would like to listen to what they wrote there to see, um, how it sounds like that's just me being in the music nerd i am like, like well, yeah. what that sounds like me too i was really excited when i saw that he was part of eddie vetter's uh, solo band when they came into town um that he's still working and he's still working with awesome people you know because honestly he did a good job you know he was mm-hmm. unfortunately a, a victim of circumstance i don't know why and i know why they didn't but why wouldn't you just roll with both of them you know, Klinghoffer can do a lot of keyboard stuff and bring more, maybe a more fuller sound, but unless it was a personal thing, you know, when people replace people, it's not always like, that's awesome. He replaced me, but I, I don't know how that is. Yeah. I, I mean, he used to be their roadie on yeah, the road. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually him and John worked on uh, some of John's solo albums. I think they worked on uh, the will to death or the, um, for water 10 days, I think was one of the albums they worked on with him. Uh, that's another good, uh, some good stuff from Rashanti. Rashanti doesn't have a great singing voice, but his rhythms and his lyrics are pretty good. Oh, yeah. Um, and but yeah, Omission, they worked on Omission together. That was one of the songs they released where he did the backup vocals. I think it was just, you know, you're kind of taking over, so maybe it's best if we just cut all ties. Yeah. Um, but I like he still speaks highly of them. I think he was very close with Anthony, which is kind of, you know, or kind of hurt him when they cut. But I mean, he was, uh, there's a video of him playing Black Summer. <laughs> Yeah. yeah now, so I think that's funny. <laughs> but uh, you know, thank you so much for joining me. 
As no, you thank see, you, my we, friend. we've already we've we've already come to the end of the journey here. <laughs> um, man, uh, really quick, one last time. What's a band that right now, if you just can't, uh, you said Blink One Eighty Two that that was a band that you didn't like. Mm-hmm. It's very awesome. Is um, what you're represent? Well, you're not really representing. Um, it's like it's a game show. I make it seem, like <laughs> game, man. but uh, very awesome is the all sports scene that you're a part of too very very cool so very glad to have you thank you so let us get started my man uh what have you been listening to most recently it's actually kind of funny is you actually i think tweeted this yesterday maybe the day before that you can't stop listening to kenny loggins (laughs) (laughs) ever since that ever since that caddyshack commercial at the super bowl right i mean i'm all right (laughs) it's played in my head yeah. way more times than i just i should. just put that on my library a couple days ago i've been listening to uh footloose you know danger everything and i'm like man he really just did all the top the songs of the 80s he was you talk about mr um he was just mr 80 soundtrack yeah. you know what i mean this guy was just busting out soundtracks i'm trying to think like there were others in the 80s but i mean when you talk about as you just said footloose top gun caddyshack yeah um pretty pretty impressive that's that's huge (laughs) i'm big into that too i love like as as stated i love the 80s the old 80s hit one hit wonders right you know anything anything to get me going um as i think i've stated to you before the very first thing i remember um viewing you or remembering from you was actually your video dancing after one of the socks (laughs) wins and to be frankly honest with you honestly I laughed so hard. I was like, this is dude, this is, this is it. And then that's, what's always awesome is that, uh, we, uh, we've come to this part, which is, well, Kenny Loggins is a great place to start. Yeah. You know, the danger zone. Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, that's, that's good. But, uh, I see you got a Zach Brown band shirt on. Huh? I, I do. Yeah. I actually got this at Wrigley and I think it was June or July when they were there this past year. So awesome. Yeah. So you, uh, so you are a concert goer. You like the you like the concert? I I have really been to too many lately. Um, that was the last one I'd been to. Um, before that, I hadn't been to one since actually this is the Zach Brown Band in uh, twenty twenty in February, out in Moline. Yeah. It's um, been tough. And yeah, I said that recently too. I mean, in the last actually one of the last concerts I went to were tickets that I had to hold two years before the pandemic because they. Uh, the band kept having to wait until you know everything was all good for them to come back. Right, um, that was Steely Dan at Tinley Park last year. But you know, Zach Brown Band, man, they put on a really good live show. They they're probably the best show I've been. I think I've seen them four four times now. Yeah, either four or five, but they always put on a great show and they do great covers. That's what it is, right like, there. They do amazing um, covers. You know, I love their own stuff. I mean, I've right. heard their songs, but like when you dig into some of their covers. Oh, they They've got videos. a really, 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 really awesome backing band too, yeah. which makes oh, yeah. it all well. It makes it it makes it better. You know, yeah. that's pretty. That's pretty um, cool. But you know, that being said, um, what other co- you see anything else besides Zach Brown band? Uh, I've seen the Black Keys twice. Saw them at the Aragon Ballroom in 2019. That was sweet. Very low key show. I think it was the Ahoy show that they did that year. Wow. Um, that was that is, did a um, lot of... another. That's a, actually another personal favorite of. Of yeah. mine. I love the Black Keys. Yeah, it's one of my wife's favorites too. So, uh, yeah, they did a lot of old tracks in that show. That was just amazing. Well, yeah, my introduction to them was the song um, "Your Touch." Yep. Um, I always, I always remember this. I was, we were, I think my dad was watching Conan O'Brien, and they came on, and it was just the two of them or whatever. Mm-hmm. This song's cool, and I was like, it is really cool. It is. And then you see from "Your Touch" all the way how their music. Mm-hmm. And even Dan Auerbach's solo stuff is, oh. is, is is really is really good. I always tell my wife, I'm like, you can always tell when Dan Auerbach produces on an album <laughs> because mm. it's it's his own version of like how he messes with the background music with everything. I'm like you you can hear all the Black Keys influence in it. Like he has this band, The Arcs. This is oh, like I other- I, I've heard that last album of theirs. Yeah. That was that was so good. And then uh, I know he did Marcus King's album. Um, great album too. Yeah. No, so I was like, yeah, you can really hear his influence in music, so it's, it's really nice. You always like, and for me, it's always been a really um, 
big thing is when you go and an artist can go and take another artist and kind of use his influence a little bit too when he's producing them mm -hmm. and while even in is in himself while also keeping it fresh you yeah. know the black keys last album um uh, still good yeah I, I i'm never one of those people who when i'm with an artist i pretty much i ride with the artist yeah and like they're like they're like almost family to me you know i'm not gonna f oh they like i was of course younger when metallica cut their hair and all everyone of my friends look, they're not metal anymore. They cut their hair. I'm like, they fuck it was hair, man. It's hair. <laughs> you know, it's hair. I remember, you know, starting in school, I'd wear rock shirts. And then I was like, you know, I'm gonna start wearing Aero Postel and American Eagle, try to look nice. And then all my rock friends were like, You you don't like rock anymore. And I was like, No, I still like the same bands. You just still still wear, listen wear to something it. different. You know? <laughs> right. But uh, you know, that's that's awesome though. Black Keys put yeah. on a really good show. At uh, this year, we are uh, we're going to the We Were Young Festival in Vegas in October. So you, uh, so I saw you said that. Yeah. Um, really, um, that is awesome. Yeah, that's really awesome. Blink One Eighty Two, Green Day, Good Charlotte, Simple Plan, all the you know all the old alternative early two thousands music, and all that, some nineties guys, and it's gonna be a blast. What was your uh, first concert? In Sync. Oh, nice! Yeah, in sync. So, were you more of? Was this the uh, celebrity tour, the No Strings Attached tour? It was the or... No Strings Attached tour. No strings attached. Yeah, you they know came out flying and... over the audience. And stuff. It's funny yeah, that it's fun. you should bring that up because I knew somehow we were going to end somewhere around there. So I was ready <laughs> for some instinct tonight. Um, I was ready for like, don't go chasing waterfalls and oh, stuff man. like that. You know that's the thing about music is you you have to always uh you, you know you i think you gotta like everything i'll have arguments with lots of people but because it's fun like when yeah. you're in the parking lot of a of a, of a baseball game you got to put something on and get people mm -hmm. up but then sometimes when you're chilling on the couch you'll listen to something a little bit different right so, you know it all depends yeah i mean my wife and i like we'll sit down here and we'll play games and she'll throw on whatever meal music on shuffle yeah. and everything place that's the same thing me just and my everything. wife you, you just so. go and like honestly like even you bringing it up you know the zach brown band i'll probably go down a rabbit hole tomorrow on a saturday and just be like oh 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 yeah. you know because that's the thing about music and that's why i you know why i think it's it's really 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 um awesome and also you know and that's music a lot as we've talked about in film and tv like you know, you got television intros, as you know, like South right. Park had a really, really good soundtrack when it came out with a mm -hmm. lot of good stuff on it. Um, you know, of course, the chef's classic, yep. uh, with Balls, Balls. which is, you know, that one's always been one that people really seem to enjoy. Right. And they, you know, <clears throat> they've had guests, you know, they had corn on really early. Radiohead was on there, and also, which like, is you know another thing Simpsons do too. You know yeah. they get those they get those musical guests, which really, you know, I think it kind of brings in more people too. You mm -hmm. know, it's more 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 musical, musical variety and stuff and stuff like that. Right. Um, you ever play any instruments ever? I played the trumpet in fifth grade. Nice, <laughs> nice, and well, I was hey. terrible at it. <laughs> Hey, you know, as you seen the other day in that game, you know, you could bring it back maybe this right. year at the, yeah. at the, at the Sox. Though. Possibly. But, uh, yeah, I played a little guitar when I was in, in, in high school, but uh, nothing that, that is very serious that I play anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a, a lot of people, though, you know, they that's that's what they do. How about music videos? Classic music videos that you have seemed to like, maybe even when you were younger. So when you went to NSYNC, were you were you a fan or did you end up going because you were going with other people or how did that work out? So I went with my brothers and my sister and obviously like my sister was a huge NSYNC crazed fan, but we also listened to it. Like we knew all the songs. We were all over it. Who wouldn't be? NSYNC's great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, we saw the music videos, especially during on that time. You know, Bye 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 was a big one at the time. Um, I think the other big one was uh can't remember which one it was but when they were actually like doing the puppet thing maybe that was bye 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 i can't remember you know what the thing is is that i because my when all that was coming out like right now my sisters are 
32 and 33, somewhere around there. So they were all there in the craze. Mm -hmm. And I was a little bit older. But you know, it's sad that I could sit there. Not really sad, but you know, I know Joey Fato. I could name all the all the players <laughs> right next to Metallica, yeah. which I always find to be interesting that like my mind just picks up any anything with music. Right. But, uh, those videos back in the day, you know, high productions. Mm -hmm. Um oh, there, there we go. I think we got uh some dirty pop. Yep. Dirty pop. Our <laughs> classic. Dirty pop. Which is crazy. Those songs never really, really escape you. And MTV no. was really, yeah, really happening back then. Well, when we went on our our big honeymoon in January, we were on a cruise ship, and like one of the channels that you could have is just a music videos channel. Oh. So it wasn't really showing like too many old stuff, but it was a lot of like you know probably 2010s, 2015 stuff. Yeah, so it was kind of funny. You know, they call me maybe music video came oh, yeah. on a couple other ones. So it was kind of funny. You're like you don't really see music videos much anymore. Well, no. I mean, thinking about all those bands that you're going to see at the We Are Young Festival, I mean, mm -hmm. lots and lots of good yeah. art, you know. Yeah. What's hilarious is I was just looking, I think it was the other day, through my ticket stubs, and I saw, you know, my Blink-182 from 2001 in Tinley Park. Yeah. And I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking to myself, it was only like 19 bucks. And you think to yourself, they're coming through town now. You know, <laughs> unfortunately, you know... A little, a little bit more money. You Just know, a little of, bit. It kind of reminds me of this from uh, from Goodfellas. They were all over the house. Heroin, that was worth $60,000. I need that money. That's all we got. What was I supposed to do? Heroin. They were in everything. That's all the money that we had, Karen. I was dependent on that. Why did you do that? <laughs> which is pretty much what uh that's one of the ones that whenever something goes wrong around here that me and my wife love to use. Karen, we needed that money. <laughs> it's all we got. But, uh, yeah. you know, that's, 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 um, those bands though, man, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, I always, it's, I've been to California, when I was in California visiting a friend, we saw Nine Inch Nails and Jane's Addiction once. Um, that was pretty cool. It's always cool when you could leave your locale and go somewhere else to see, especially all those bands. Yeah, so you know, we got Green Day, Blink 182, 30 Seconds to Mars, Offspring, Good Charlotte, Five Seconds of Summer, All Time Low, Rise Against, Yellow Card, Sum 41, Simple Plan, Newfound Glory. Like, it's crazy. This might be the opportunity where, um, to get Jared Leto, you know, I mean, you get him away to get him on the, you know, the hookup on film, you know. Hey, I could maybe but... catch him in Geely too. <laughs> Geely too. <laughs> Pitch him the script. Here you go. <laughs> No, that would be that would actually be um, ridiculous. Right here, I got uh, my actual very first tape I have ever I ever owned, and it's uh, MC Hammer's "Please oh. Hammer, Don't Hurt Him," <laughs> which I'll always think is you know it's a really ridiculous first tape. Can't touch this and mm -hmm. those 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 classics, but they never they never they never you don't forget about it right. which is funny i just find this box in the in an attic upstairs and i'm like oh some tapes i'll post about these <laughs> you know and that's generally how a lot of things are but when is that concert again that one's october yeah october 21st oh. it's a two-day festival but we got tickets for the one day so oh yeah which is i think I'm pretty sure both days it's just the same band, yep, same lineup, yep. same, same lineup. So which... they, yeah, they, the so last year they had to cancel one of the days because of high winds. Yeah. Um, so like then this year they only had one day scheduled, but then like a couple weeks ago they announced the second show. So now it's a two day thing. Did you uh, make it out to the that concert that they had at uh, Sox Park last year with um, what was his name, the DJ Cascade? Okay, did you make? No, it? I didn't. I wasn't at that game. <laughs> Which I often think about. We've I've had lots of talks with this about a lot of people's why the cell. I don't know. Well, I should call it uh, guaranteed rate. Why they don't do more like real concerts? Not yeah, eight after, but you know I the know there one I remember them having was the Chance the Rapper concert. Yeah, that was like I think it was twenty eighteen, nineteen, something like that. Yeah, and I think it was nine. Like we're talking nineties. Uh, the Rolling Stones came through there, mm -hmm. but it's got to be something with somewhere with the money or something that they're not going to get or so I, yeah. I just have to believe it or something or wrigley field has signed some kind of contract where they can only have i don't know how yeah works, i mean a lot it, of big acts go through wrigley field jacks yeah i mean just this week i think within the last week i think guns and roses is coming through mm -hmm. i mean 
that's one place I have never I've never seen a concert. I've seen, you know, five, six, seven baseball games. I've never seen a concert. And I'm I'm curious because I I bet it sounds not bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, yeah. we sat first first baseline. So like the stage was all the way back in center field. I mean, it wasn't like we could see everything you'll hear, but like obviously there's a big screen, everything, everything sounds great. Yeah, it echoes nice. Like it's it's a really good venue. I remember which this is I, I often feel bad about this, but I well not because I saw I saw Dave Matthews at Soldier Field when I was in high school, and it was actually right after Walter Payton passed away. Ah. And I'll never forget the drummer was wearing his jersey, and like he stood up, and the whole stadium was filled, going crazy. That was actually really cool. What wasn't cool is that I had brought a date that I was interested in in the concert, but I also had three or four of my friends, and what had happened was is. Um, I was more interested in goofing around than like talking to this girl. And I always feel <laughs> bad about that because it just shows how immature I was back in high school instead of being a nice guy. But that being said, uh, Soldier Field, they hit, they didn't sound too bad, but I was kind of far away too. Mm-hmm. So you could still talk and it wasn't like the music was drowning you out. Like Aragon Ballroom, which yeah. has big concerts. Oh, yeah. Seen quite a couple of there. And I can imagine, I didn't see the, I haven't seen the Black Keys yet, but I could imagine that that was really it's, loud. Awesome. It's a wild show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, definitely, definitely um, awesome. But uh, what are some uh, bands maybe that you uh, don't like? Anything off the top of your head, or are you pretty much one of those, you know, I'll listen to anything. anything. I mean, I'll, I'll it's the mood. like, I've never really been a Beatles guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fair. I mean, I to be fair, I haven't really listened to much of them. Like, I just, yeah. you know, well, it's not my kind of stuff. But as we've talked of like a couple of weeks ago, as I was talking with Yumper, sometimes music is well, you grow up with it. Sometimes you're introduced to it later. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you find it yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's all different. Yeah. Like sometimes it's what you listen to something maybe your parents listen to it. You know, it's mm-hmm. all all different, right? You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't really like uh, dislike anybody else. Like, I mean, see, that's the it's... cool thing about that's the one thing I could always say about you. You're really awesome down the line. Like, you're yeah. not going to sit there. And which, you, especially honestly, if you would have talked to me, I don't know if I could have did this 15 years ago because with <laughs> movies and music. Because as I brought up with, I even brought it up with my wife, and I brought it up with um, Adam before, like. I'll never forget leaving on a date with a girl. It was like a third date, third movie. And I was complaining about the movie. And she's like, do you ever just shut up and stop (laughs) complaining? And I like got in the car and I really went like inward. And I was like, do I? Do I really? Do I have to nitpick everything? (laughs) Yeah, to the point now that I think it was like a couple of months ago. And when a date with Tad Hamilton was on and my wife's like, do you ever see this? And I'm like, no. And I watched it. I'm like, you know, that wasn't that bad. And then I go to Adam and I'm like, you know, win a day with Ted Hamilton, isn't that bad? He's like, what? He's the Godfather. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, you're maybe you're right in the Godfather. But that's why I love like the Geely stuff. Because, you know, in all reality, it's like ridiculous in its own way. And it's, it's fun <laughs> in its own way. And, yeah. you know, and that's the same thing with music, you know. Yeah. You know, coming up here really soon, um, me and uh, not Larry, we're going to be doing some Weird Al talk. You know, Weird Al's a guy who really deep digs deep into like, you know, looking at the more humorous side of music, oh, yeah. which is, you know, which makes it definitely, you know, that's the thing about music is you got to keep it fresh. I mean, Weird Al's what helped Bo Burnham be so popular in like comedy music, you know? Yeah. I mean, when a musician can do like the comedy music thing, mm-hmm. I mean, even like, you know, Steve Martin has done some stuff with yep. like, you know, and, and you sit there and I'm, I'm just as big into c- comedy as I am into any of this other stuff. And you right. sit there and you, you, you can really sit there and see that how a lot of this stuff is all interconnected, you know? And that's why when I was, I was always think if I was like an actor, I'd want to hang out with like musicians. And if I was a musician, I'd want to hang out with like the actors. And I've seen that before, you know, I've seen Alice Cooper hanging out with like some of the actors in the seventies and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, or you got coming up. Have you seen this new um, Elvis movie? (laughs) Did you see that yet? We watched it on the cruise ship. <laughs> I didn't really catch too much of it. I was just playing out the pool, but yeah, like, no, I mean, it's, I it's too much not, attention. Uh, you know, with the Oscars coming up this weekend, you know, right. you got him in that movie and you got like 
Dewey Cox. That's probably one of my <laughs> my favorite yeah. uh, musical biographies because it does both. Yeah, it actually is funny. Mm-hmm. It talks a lot about music, but it also weaves in some of that past. Mm-hmm. And it does a you know it's a good time while doing it. Yeah, I I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know I. I I I knew anyone, especially you, with a great sense of humor. I mean, that movie is is definitely, you know, where 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 it's at. Oh yeah, you know. But you know, as 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 things go on, you know, you say to yourself, do you are you more of? Would you say are you more likely to listen to like '80s music, '90s music, '2000s music? Like, what's your usual first go to? Or again, it's kind of like. Or how about you know what? Let's use this for an example. What does your wife usually like to put on? Is she more of a what's her go to? Or is she too like you? Is she you guys both pretty much? She's she likes a lot of the the early two thousand stuff or the you know like she awesome. or the twenty ten stuff. Even then, like the old Sirius XM channels used to have like oh, yeah. the Pop two K and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, she also loves eighties music too. So, you know, it's, it really depends on like our mood that night. Like she's just like, Oh, I'll play eighties radio or oh, I'll play early two thousands radio or something like that. So it all just depends. Well, that's the thing is when I met my wife, she's seven years younger than me. So she brought a lot of that, those bands that you're seeing in Las Vegas. Like, mm. and I, you know, at that moment I didn't listen to too much of that, but that's, what's cool is you get introduced, you know, to more, to different stuff. And yeah. that, you know, always usually makes it, you know, more of a, you know, a good musical you know experience you know what is did you like uh thunderstruck when it was used at the uh the cell when yes. that was going on yeah um that's what's always awesome you know is is music in sports that's probably mm-hmm. one of my favorite things so like one thing that i probably do more than anything else is imagine when i'm coming out of the bullpen so, like, when you're coming out of the bullpen, which you've been as just as many Sox games as me, and you see those guys down, especially the closer, right? What's something that you think you're going to come out of the bullpen, and you're going to play when there? It could be even something you know, humorous, whatever, whatever something that you you would think. Well, what was funny is I was trying to think of like a really funny song that would throw people off, and I just like couldn't come up with one. So <laughs> uh, I asked, I actually asked my brother this question like just before I popped on here, and I was like, yeah. "If you were a relief pitcher coming out of the bullpen, what would your song be?" And I said, "Let me guess, it'd be right into by Tool." And he goes, "This is a perfect song." I'm like, "That's exactly what I was gonna pick." <laughs> is that really? Yeah. Is that really what he said? Yeah, I love that song. Yeah, it's that's actually what a, actually that is great. at the end of the uh, hundred thousand days album, yeah. and that yeah. is actually one of my favorite songs on that album. Yeah. Oh, your brother, man! I gotta meet this guy. This yeah. is, that's actually an awesome song. And um, if you were here on camera, I got some goosebumps because another thing <laughs> and why I do this show, I love it out of left field. Yeah. Did not expect that to happen. That was oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, my brother's you know, a big tool guy. He's seen him in concert several times now. So. Is he a younger brother, older brother? Older brother. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah, seen, was... I've seen them a call. I seen them before they did the uh Lollapalooza, which just stays in Chicago. It used to do like a touring Lollapalooza in ninety seven it came to Tinley Park and they were there. But uh actually a top a top I put them in there my top ten love tool. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Really cool. Um but that's that then you really had some good influences uh growing up, man. Yeah, really, really, really cool. I gotta say, the Usher thing was way out of left field. That was just me, <laughs> <laughs> me on my own. Well, since you said about the Usher thing, I've had not that Usher song in my head. I've had the song like "You Got It Bad" in my head. Yeah, you got it, you got it, you got it bad, and I don't know why. Like you just put Usher, and then all of a sudden I look down, and this is yeah. a lot what you do. I look down, and then my mind starts tuning on other mm-hmm. stuff, and I'm like, oh man, this is awesome. I'm in, I'm, 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 I'm in, I'm in a zone, which is. What's what you want to be when you're talking about a lot of this stuff? Right. I love it, you know. But uh, very, very, very cool. Um, and that rhymes with tool, which actually <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Uh, what's do you like? Uh, like movie soundtracks, song in a movie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One and Two. Oh yeah, are some of the best film Classic. soundtracks. I mean, you got. All those old songs, man. Yeah, awesome. I mean those really, just really awesome. the way that they use them too is perfect. Uh, oh, yeah. Throughout both those movies, uh, Reservoir Dogs has a great one. 
does have a great one. Um, Pulp Fiction's got a good one, too. Um, really good one. Tar- Tarantino's got a lot of good ones. Um, I mean, there aren't really... I mean, I like all the, I like the Disney style. Like Beauty and the Beast is a good one. Well, that's... Yeah. I could sing all those songs, too. Yeah. Which, like, The Little Mermaid, The Beauty and the Beast. Because, again, growing up, I didn't... Wasn't, like, it was on in the background, and mm-hmm. I would watch it, and it wasn't, like... Because I was trying to be cool. Like, oh, I'm not watching that. I'm listening to Metallica. Over here. <laughs> but the reality is, is when your mom's playing in the car for your sisters over and over and over, you do mm-hmm. hear it. You yeah. do take it in. And honestly, it, it does really, it really sticks with you. You know, Disney, you know, Disney's really good with a lot of that, you know. Getting yeah, songs. we, uh, as, a, as a family, we had the, uh, the Disney's greatest hits, like old CDs, like the green Disney uh, Mickey Mouse head and the red Mickey Mouse head. Oh, yeah. When we pop those in the car on vacation everywhere, and you know. oh yeah, yeah. I mean, just honestly, back to back to sports, really quick. Again, another tape that I have over here is the original Super Bowl Shuffle. Shuffle. You know, and you're saying to yourself, like, this is like one of the original songs that I, you know, I ever heard in my head, and it's a football team putting it together. Which <laughs> I've gone on runs where you're just I'm watching this thing and still imagining that these guys are really laying it down like that, and really. <laughs> rapping and stuff like that but you know they they were good and they yep. did good they were doing good stuff but uh before we head out here i want to thank you so much for uh coming on and always being super supportive of course. especially on a day like today because let me share this with you really quick because i had a sh- i was going to post it online i said you know what i'm going to wait right here before we have to go hold on it's right before this I came home today, and this is what my 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 nice television looked like right there in the living room. And I said, <laughs> "Self, what happened?" And oh, I boy. guess somebody accidentally knocked into it. So, uh, luckily, I got it a replaceable, nice little thirty-two inch that I'll have to watch. Let's see uh, what you've been listening to. Yeah, so actually, um, I uh, I got a b- bunch of vinyls like over the past like two weeks. Um, some some good ones uh good pickups uh but the the one thing i'm actually starting to listen to a, a little bit more I, and then obviously I, I think i'm late to the party but is uh mac miller um oh, okay. I, yeah i one of my one of my buddies at work he actually um is a really huge fan of him and i was telling him like i don't know why i was snoozing on him because he is i don't know if you 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 like mac miller but um he has a lot of good stuff and I'm like just barely catching up to, to it. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm late to the party, but um, I like it. I, I like his music. It's very unique. It's uh, it's different. Um, the way that he was explaining it to me was that a lot of his albums were very, um, it, it was the way he uh, did his albums were just very um, separated from one after another. It wasn't like, you know, and let, let me put it to you this way, like the strokes, like the strokes, like when they first came out with, um, with their first album, it yes, was like, a, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was great. It was great. But yeah. I think they were trying to do catch lightning in a battle and the second album and it didn't do so well. So with Mac Miller, like he just has so many like different elements and, and different ways that he was like uh, doing his albums. I haven't caught up to it, so I can't really explain it thoroughly because I, I st- I'm still trying to like, you know, play catch up. But that's what he how he was explaining to it. And I just like I was listening to a couple of uh, his songs. And I was just blown away. What uh, what album did you pick up? Um, So I did. I did pick up a couple here. Um, you know, probably just pick a, a couple over here um I, let's see i got i got jameric wise uh a funk odyssey oh nice. Um, nice i got uh the best of morrissey uh the incubus science um that's a good album right there yeah the one you know i i picked up a bunch of these like vinyls and, and whatnot but the one like i said that was really like that caught my eye was this a line i uh album that i that i got wow. um it was basically from their Rose Bowl um, year in 1984. Um, the music's very cheesy. Like, you, you know, just think just think of like, I don't want, like, I'm a Sox fan, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not trying to knock the song, but it's just very like, uh, like that Cubs, like, uh, go no. Cubs, go no, song, no. you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. it's very cheesy, right. you know? And that, that's basically what, what this reminds me of, but, uh, I mean, other than that, like I picked up uh, Genesis, um, 
that's a good album. Yeah, I picked up, you know, Genesis and then I picked up Steely Dan. And I, I mean, like I said, I, oh, the, the one that I, I was really excited about was actually uh, a perfect circle. Their, oh, their first, yeah, first their album. first album. Yeah. Mere, mere de norms, mere de norms. Great album. Yeah. Yeah, so I was very I was very excited to pick that up. Um, like I said, I've been kind of on a tear with uh, with a lot of vinyls that going like vinyl shopping. Um, there's just places up in uh, that, that I like to go to and like more called Reef Records. Uh, the guy over there is just he's a great guy. He, he'll talk music for days, just like 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 how I would. Um, yeah. And then there's, there's a, yeah, then there's another guy up in uh, St. Charles um, called uh, the place is called Hoarders. Um, they you can you can literally be at that place for hours, just going through all the records and, and whatnot. And just like that, that little uh, picture that you got over there. I mean, oh, you're, yeah. I, I would, I would be there. I would be there for days. Like I was, yeah. I would still be there right now, just going through all the stuff that the guy has. Um, and he's, he's actually expanding. So he's, he's going to actually get a little bit bigger here soon. But, um, but yeah, I've been, um, I've been on a That's tear. Amazing lately. Going into those places and you're just kind of like, even if like me and you went in there, you just go your se- separate ways and you could just be looking man forever. Cause yeah. What, yeah. what, what is lurking behind, behind every single crevice in that, uh, in that collection is, is every time I've been in a music store, that's what I'm trying to look for. Um, yeah. I, I mean, and, and that's the thing is that you'll, like I said, I, I don't know how I, I went to like the eye section. Cause I wasn't even looking at the, you know, for anything like w- with the eyes, um, but I just went in there and all of a sudden, like, it was just there. Like I said, that, that Illini record, I'm just like, I'm like, what the hell is this? You know? And I'm a huge, like I said, I'm a huge Illini fan. Um, I've been a Illini fan since 98, particularly more their, their basketball team. And when I, when I found that, um, I was just amazed. I was just shocked. Another thing I would say too, about when you're going vinyl, like, uh, you know, record shopping, is that if you see something, I don't know if you if you do this as well too, but if you see something and you know that it won't be there again and you have the oh. money, just buy it. You know, oh, yeah. don't there's there's multiple there's multiple times that I I like I picked up a record and I'm like, huh, you know, maybe I'll put this down and I'll I'll get it later. And I'll go a week later or a couple days later and it's gone. And I haven't and I haven't seen it since. So if I see something, and I know like right now, uh vinyls are Get, getting more popular than they were ever before. I started really collecting vinyls in 2016. Um, it's grown from like I, my first vinyl record was uh, Van Halen's 1984. Um, until now, like I got over 229 uh, vinyl records right now. So That's a nice collection, very nice. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, there's just times where I'm just like I pick something up and I'm like I, I put it back down. It's like oh, I'll get it later. <laughs> And then it's gone. And well, yeah, I mean, like it's hard to find. I've been in the store where two things have happened. Number one, I've seen somebody have an album in their hand, and then I'm like, I want that. And then I go to the same to the artist section, and there's no more. So then I try to like follow that person around, hoping they'll put that down, and then they don't. And then I'm upset that I didn't get there sooner. And then the opposite, where you're just kind of want, um you know, a certain album that a place has, and then you get there and it doesn't, it doesn't have it. But uh, there's always just so much, I've never went into somewhere looking for one thing and didn't walk out with five other different things. You know, I mean, it's, It's, there's always something to find. Yeah. Yeah. It's like target. You know how they always say like, you're only getting, you're, you're going to go in there for just like one particular thing. And you end up like paying like $200. That's me at a vinyl record shop. I, I will I'm, I'm not going there for one for one vinyl record. I'm just like, oh yeah, here I'll take it. Like if I start seeing things, like I said, if now I'm I'm, I'm a little bit more, um, I'll just take it. Like I said, I'll, you know, I'll pay for it if it's something that I like. I'm just gonna go buy it, and that's how I am. Like it's like Target to me. It's like I'll, you know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna only pay like twenty, thirty bucks or whatever, and I am paying two hundred dollars for it. Um, but um, yeah, for sure, it's 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 hard, man. Because like I said, it's just there's so much music that I love that I could probably like have like a whole room full of vinyls. Just how much like music I love. Collections, collections yeah. are. They are just as big of addiction than anything else. You know, I've been into DVDs before where I've had massive collections of, and now music CDs, albums. I have, you know, over a couple hundred albums. You know, you're just, you always want more because there's just so much 
awesome music to have. I mean, when you're talking about buying Genesis and Incubus and the same thing, that just shows how much music there is to buy. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's what I'm, and you know, I'm, you know, spoiler alert, I'm going to eventually be putting some, you know, stuff, uh, stuff up for like our, our bum, uh, cast, like little videos and whatnot of like, you know, my picks, uh, places to go and whatnot, just, you know, awesome. we're, I'm working out the kinks right now on it. Yeah, but, awesome. Um, I just think that right now, like, you know, vinyls are becoming, like I said, they become a lot more popular. I've been seeing a lot of my friends post things up about like what their small little record collection and I think it's great. Like this is something I was striving for when I first bought that 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 uh that Van Van Halen record back in two, uh, 2016. Um and it, it was just going to like um what's that store? Uh they were selling records at the I mean they still do. Uh I can't think of the place right now. It was like the only place at the time that I always would see vinyl records. Damn it. Now, where did you first start buying? Like, when did you first start getting into music? It it, it probably, well, I would say um, it probably was my uncles. Uh, my uncles are big on music as well, too. And obviously they're, they were into, you know, they're into rock, you know, they're into rock music, but uh, and it's certain, certain, certain uncles are into certain things. Oh, yeah. So, um, for example, um, I was talking to you, you know, on the pre-show about STP. Um, when my, my uncle, my uncle Paul, like he used to live upstairs, at, um, from my grandmother's house. And I was just, when I was just there for, for like to, to visit them, he used to have like this nice little sound, sound system. And I heard him playing plush and I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, I, I just fell in love with it. And he, ha he had a huge, like uh CD collection. And that's where I got a lot of like the rock stuff. Like he was a huge fan of kiss. Um, obviously I, 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 you know, uh, talked about Van Halen as well too. Uh, you too. Um, just to name a few, uh, Def Leppard, obviously there, when I heard that, when he played that first Def uh, Leppard, uh, album high and dry, I was blown away. That it's first, great. that first song that, on that album just blew that, me away. That, like, is a, that is a good, good album right there. That is a really yeah. good album. All so, yeah. And then eventually like there was other stuff that, you know, I got into, you know, when I was like uh, my uncle Tony, when I, you know, I hang out with him, like he would, t you know, talk about like in excess, he was a big in excess fan. Oh, um, he was telling me stories of like, you know, when he was younger, he loved listening to um, breakfast in America by super tramp. Oh, that's a great um, album. Yeah. So, I mean, there was just like stories upon stories and that's what I love about like some of these like particular, um, uh, uh, uh vinyls that i have and whatnot um that i pick up because some like some of them have like stories to them that's why the reason why i like it or during the time that you know wherever i was in my life i you know i i love this or i love that so um but i would i would have to say like my uncles my uncles took me to my first concert as well too i'm actually i'm actually got, I'm, so yeah. i'm actually glad i pulled this What's out this so one? Yeah, so one of the first like uh, concerts I went to was Jamboree, nineteen ninety nine. I don't know if you remember those Q one hundred and one shows. Oh, so you got the same one? <laughs> oh, you got the little booklet. Yeah, yeah, I got the little. Booklet. I got the uh, right up here. The uh, who was these guys? The two skinny Jays that opened up the second stage. They signed because yeah. uh, I think believe the other day your uh, cousin brought up on how local H that he was that the show you he was probably talking about yes too, yes so, well, he, the one jamboree that was a classic at the show right there yeah so he actually went to the one that I really wanted to go to um I think it was like a year prior because he actually got to see erasure um oh, yeah. I forgot he's he's in he's in the chat right now so he could probably like pull that up but um I mean, I'm just looking at this particular lineup for, for the 99 yeah. one, yeah. um, you know, they have blink 182, they had Litz, oh, yeah. silver chair, local H orgy. Um, obviously you were, at, you were at that concert. So the offspring were, was throwing garbage. You remember all that. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah, whole stage. Yeah, yeah. Phil, yeah. The whole stage. Phil. Yeah. And, they, and they actually... I'll never forget chili peppers come out. Cause it's like right, right. When Californication comes out. Yes. So yes. they come out and they're really pissed off. I remember that for Shikitas is like those assholes left through all this stuff. And I've, to this day, I don't know why the offspring did that. And ironically, I'm wearing my Ignay on the ombre shirt. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's second stage though, too. Um, 
you know um orgy they had a pretty good album that first album by orgy was was pretty solid yeah they took that uh um that new order song blue monday yep, blue monday um, and, and it. yeah so i mean that looking back especially when uh I got to see Red Hot Chili Peppers right when they came uh, to yeah when they they came out with Californication. Um, that was a great album. I think that was like one of their best albums out of any of their catalogs. Um, so I, I'm glad I got to see it, and I loved the Offspring. I got to see Offspring again at the Aragon with my uncle, oh, nice. and seeing that at a small venues. I don't know if you're you're like this as well too, but um, going to see concerts at at smaller venues. I think I I rather prefer that over going to a big uh, outdoor you know venue just because the acoustics are just they sound more better to me. Well, I always think, especially Aragon Ballroom. When I'm standing in Aragon Ballroom, I think of bands like Queen played Aragon Ballroom, and you imagine how big Queen was when they ended. They were at like Wembley Stadium, so yeah. imagine Queen at Aragon Ballroom. You know, any band, you know, the Grateful Dead at Aragon Ballroom, any band that's huge at the yeah. Aragon Ballroom is definitely yeah like don't get me wrong like i love going to eat, like bigger concerts like obviously i would have loved to have been at that uh live aid when queen was playing at wembley stadium and oh, he had that God. whole crowd just like just looking at that every time it, it just gives me chills you know so i'm not saying that you know like no you know, no that was, would still would have been equally awesome too yeah yeah, I mean, yeah yeah exactly it's the stones i remember i don't know if you remember this i think it was like 97 they did um they played three shows. They played at um, the U.S. Cellular Field. They played Soldier Field, and then they played like Aragon Ballroom. No, I think it was Comis- It was U.S. Cellular. It was Aragon Ballroom. It was the Chicago Theater to give you three experiences at three different venues. Um, yeah. It's cool when you get to see bands like that in different places, especially at different at bigger parts of their career. Yeah, yeah. But so what? Uh, so what do you um let me ask you a question. What yeah, please. would what would you uh say is your best band that that you love that you absolutely love like right off the bat like what would you say would be your best ooh, like band? Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, I'm really big on like my mood. So okay. like for me that's that's to me like I don't like I love so like like just for instance right here I brought so you know I love Frank Zappa. Okay. I love Peter Gabriel. I love right. Prince. I love Outkast. I love Curtis Mayfield. I love Van Halen. You yeah. know, I mean, like you pretty much can go. I love the dead. You know, it's like something I posted, but I love the misfits. You know, I love okay. the punk stuff, too. Yeah. Um, it's been different parts of my life that I've liked different things. Like I get angry at myself because when I used to take guitar lessons for a year, I was into like the punk rock phase. Right. But and my guitar teacher was like into Lindsey Buckingham, Fleetwood Mac. And I would like oh, laugh him and I would laugh and kind of make fun of him when I left. And now I, I, I'm very angry at myself because I would have rather learned Fleetwood Mac because then I could have always played the punk stuff. But to learn Fleetwood Mac instead of I was like, no, two power chords and stuff like that. And he would make comments. But, you know, so were you were you into like the Sex Pistols, like the Ramones, uh, television, like the Clash? Television, television, the Clash. Clash yeah. is probably one of my top. They're a top band for me. Um, but, or the New York Dolls as well too. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, what about Chicago bands? Like they actually, I don't know if you you, you they, they came out with a documentary of uh, you weren't there. It was a punk documentary about Chicago. Did you did you you saw yes, it? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that stuff. was real cool. Yeah, I, 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 th- I think the one, one that I that stuck out to me the most was uh, Naked Ray Gun, and I actually got. Yeah, I was to actually see... gonna say just Naked yeah, and Ray I Gun. actually got to see them with actually w- with Peter at um at, at the Foo Fighters concert uh, when we oh. went to to Wrigley Field. Um, it was place. yeah, it was um, it was them, uh, Cheap Trick, it was Foo Fighters, and I forgot who the fourth band was, but um, they only play like. A, a certain amount of songs because they, they couldn't play obviously like a long time since Foo Fighters were that was pretty much the headliner right there. But um yeah, I, I was I'm big into punk as well too. I mean you sit there and you it, that's what's cool, you know, when you go you got those outside influences like uncles, you know. Yeah. You know, and then you bring in your own, you know, friends and then you mix it all together and play it like 
it's all about vibes too. You know, you're not going to put on the super heavy stuff at like 12 at night. You know, you're going to want something a little bit more laid back. That's yeah. why back to your Mac Miller stuff. Like I definitely understand when you're picking, you know, different genres and stuff like that. I'm all, I'm well, all and, and, and I think, I, I think that's what I love. If like, I think I have a good ear for music. Yeah. Um, and one of the things right. that like, I, I just love, you know, anything that, that, that sounds great. It has a great, the, that the presentation as well too is a big thing with me. So I started also getting into uh Molchat Doma. I don't know if you know who, oh. who they are. Yeah, um, they're, they're, yeah, they're a band from Belarus. Uh, that's kind of very like, uh, kind of gothish type of like joy division yeah. uh, type of sound. Um, I really got into them. They are fucking awesome. I have no idea what the fuck they're saying, but because uh, <laughs> everything's in, like it's it's in Belarus, like it's in their lang like native uh, language, but uh, it sounds great. Um, it, it, they're they're really good. They're actually coming to Chicago here in in March uh, at the end of March, so um, at the Riviera. So I might try to find them, or I might try to go to that concert. I'm not quite sure yet because it's on a Thursday. You know, I really like going, like especially. And all those bands that you mentioned earlier that your uncles turned you on to, like, of course, the songs that are on the radio, but I love going out like the songs that are deeper on the albums. Like, and that's yeah. why when you get an album for me, I, I'll never forget, like my first year of music buying probably back, um, which congratulations on turning 40. I'm also 40. I turned 40 in May. So that's why we're on Thank the you. same. Uh, yeah. That's when, when you could, when you link up, that's why when you're like, oh, Jamboree 99. You know, right. when you're sitting there and, and part of some of this stuff. But I, I find that music, you mature, too, through the years, too. Because, like, there's right. a lot of music that I listen to now that if they would have told me at 16 or 15 that I would have been listening to, I probably would have made some jokes or something. Like, and I, sure. you know, I like stuff like Sade. You know, oh. I like stuff, you know, like, I like, I mean, jazz, smooth jazz. I mean, I can go, like, stuff like Weather Report and stuff like that um Speak, so speaking of her like i uh there you go <laughs> there it is there it you is know? then you know then you know all about sade yeah you know I mean, you're just pretty much trying to mix up different vibes is pretty much what it's what it's about yeah and, it, and that's i think it's, like i said i i think i have a good good uh air for me like for music and it, it, i'm not like i don't discriminate like anything when it comes to music like me and uh, peter and like the whole bums we're actually talking about um we were we we're all taylor swift fans i mean she's oh, got nice. she's got banger she's got bangers out there too and i'm not gonna like deny it like so like you know shot a like I, I think there's a lot of people that love shot a like i mean my music library is just full of just different types of things like i could talk about cab calloway um oh, you know God. when he was doing like many the moocher and all that and some yes. other, I, <laughs> other other you know other music that i you know i started liking as soon as you um, say that, i got the whole song in my head Hi, yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah great, so, but that, yeah, that song. Betty Boop, yeah, that Betty Boop cart cartoon. Um, oh yeah. But I mean, you know, obviously, like, you know, you, I don't know if you could see her right here. I have to put this in, but you know, I got Frank Sinatra. I'm a huge there Sinatra fan as well, too. Oh yeah. You know, with the Rat Pack. I mean, I love all that type of music with jazz, um, blues. Um, I think is great as well too. Um, oh, obviously, yeah. we talked about punk, rock and roll, R and B. Um, you name it, I, I I probably know what you're talking about, um, and and th and that's what I love. It's just like there's so many different music that I think people don't know that it's out there, and I think that's why doing stuff like this, so like I would I wouldn't say like educate them, but it's just more like you know, oh hey, I didn't know that they you know they played this or you know wow this sounds really good too. I love listening to new music. So when people have suggestions of like what what's out there, and I don't know about it like hey i'll i'll give it a listen i'll give it a try um oh yeah but that's and that's, and, and that's what i love when i and, and when i when i listen to new music when i'm listening to like new things i'm and it catches on i'm just like like i said for example like mac miller you know i'm, I'm super late on on him but and i knew i knew of him i just never paid attention to his music and i love hip-hop um but when i started hearing like more of his music it's like okay i could see why people love his music well, that's the thing, you know, is, 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 is the music is where it's, where it's at. You know, what are some other concerts that you went to? You got over there. You said you got some more stubs. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, you know, telling you pre-show that, you know, I got out, you know, obviously I, the one thing I do miss when you're going to concerts, like, you know, 
all these ticket stubs, you know, you got, oh, yeah. you, know, oh, yeah. ticket stubs. And, you know, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of glad that I, you know, hung on to them. I know he, I know he's in the comments right now, but I actually went to go see, um, in 2003, I, this is actually the first time I actually drank a beer was, uh, <laughs> seeing a dashboard confessional. I don't think you could see like, yeah, but, yes. um, he was I, do a, a real he, mean, I do a real mean screaming infidelities, but I won't uh, scream it out here on the thing. But yeah, I like that. Yeah, he I was saw them he, at a recent picnic. Um, still sound really well. Yeah, I'm. Well, he's a big fan. I, I'm. I know he like, is. I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, you know, I went to. Go, I got a Blink One Eight Two One. I it was back in two thousand one. I got. I went to go see him. You know, obviously, I got my both. I went to Jamboree back to back, so ninety nine and then uh, two thousand. I went to go see that one as well too. When I got to see three eleven. Um, I also have that same booklet as well, too. I don't know if you have it as well, too, but uh, oh, with you the know. super, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they had like Long Beach Dub All Stars. I don't know if you remember them, they were kind of like oh, a yeah. um, sublime uh, continuation of sublime, yeah. yeah. Um, the offspring, I was telling you, I went to go see them at the Aragon. Um, I got to see Aerosmith and Kiss with my with my uncle uh, at the Tweeter Center. At the, that's what it was called at the time. It was back in two thousand three. I think one of my favorite ones though um, has to be Rush. Uh, I'm a huge oh, Rush. Which, which one did Rush you? Fan. Oh yeah, which yeah. Rush show did you go to? So I went to the one. It was me and my uh, my uncle Paul that I mentioned. It was back in t- uh, two thousand and two. And we he actually didn't buy. He didn't have tickets at the time. Like we just went was up. This at the Tweeter went, Center. Yeah, we we just was he it, just went you up. You got your just, ticket, or you got your ticket right there by chance? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. Year, what date was that? It, it was uh, two thousand and two, July twentieth. July, yes. Wow, I got the same. Too. I was there. What what row were you in? <laughs> uh, I was at uh. Actually, we got seats, so we were. I was at seat thirty one, row box Y Y. Oh was, yeah, I was uh, in. I was in I was in the coolest row, Triple D, for someone. <laughs> triple. <laughs> I was but in. Well, I was awesome, in two five. Was not too far that was away. a yeah. good show. Well, it. it was. With, I mean, uh, and I. I loved show. it. I mean, I think they. I think they opened up with Tom Sawyer, um, yeah. if, I, if I recall. Um, but I mean, Neil Peart on on the drums. I mean, I just absolutely love Rush. When I heard him first time on the radio, when when they still had the loop around, uh, it's just. I've, I, that's how I felt. That's how I fell in love with, with a lot of the rock music that I listen to today. Like listening to the loop. Um, I was working in a warehouse and they had the, they had the loop on all the time. And I just started picking up things. I mean, there was no Shazam at the time too. So I, I had to wait until they, you know, they actually said the name. Cause I'm like, who's fucks this? Who's that? Who's that? And then eventually I started knowing all these like bands. Like, I mean, I'm a huge Led Zeppelin fan. Uh, so I, I, I think if, if you would ask me, what would be my favorite band of all time? It's, definitely zeppelin i got most of all their vinyls i got some of their other you know deep cut stuff as well too i got a bootleg um that i bought a cd of, of theirs at called uh cracker jack blues um that they played at some sort of pub in england um i mean and that was i mean that was like one of the reasons why i picked up a guitar do i sound like jimmy page no but i you know i try to good be I, playing a guitar is hard <laughs> i mean we could sit there and um we could sit there and, and talk about uh, Led Zeppelin all day long. I I I love Led Zeppelin. Physical Graffiti yeah. is one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, and not like I love Cashmere and Trampled Underfoot. I'm talking about all the other songs, like the deep cuts, like we talked about earlier. Um, yeah, but that that's a great band. I love Led Zeppelin. Um, you mentioned earlier a little bit. A lot of people put this band down, but I like them a lot and it sounds like you do too i love you too i'm a big you two fan i like um maybe not so much as the last album or something i mean it's still t- listenable i don't have a problem with them but i think they're pretty good yeah you know? i think when they came out with like when they first came out i mean it was definitely a uh a breath of fresh air it was. um you know they were also at live eight as well too um when they came out with war, I mean, I, I, you know, I, new year's, new year's day is one of my favorite songs of them. Um, I, I, I obviously I got like a lot of other ones that they have as well too. Their catalog is ridiculous, you know, even better than the real thing. Uh, I, I even like that song from the, the Batman forever soundtrack. Hold me, through. You, um, hold me, yeah. thrill me, kiss me, kill yeah, me. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, and then 
I, I never got to see him in concert. That's one thing I, I would say is that even some like the concerts I just mentioned right now, I wish I went to go see more concerts. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, especially for me in the last 10 years, a lot of the concerts that we're going to talk about that we've talked about is the past. So yeah. like the last 10 years, I mean, I've been more fly, I've probably been to, you know, Sox games, you know, right. I wish, you know, some of those, no offense, Sox, but some of those losing seasons, I wish I would have taken out a couple games and went to a couple more concerts instead now that I look back at it. But what can you do? It was all fun, um, no matter what. And especially yeah. since now ticket prices, um, you mentioned earlier that you got their album last summer. The tickets were put off for two and a half years for the uh, because of the pandemic. But I saw Steely Dan finally. That was a good that was a good show. Okay, um, you know, but I don't get out to as many concerts that I would like to either. But I'm and, always looking for an awesome concert to go to. That yeah, and I think that's. Right. And I think that's the thing that I kind of kick myself like, you know, I and I'm never going to see these bands ever because either their lead singer passed away or, or somebody passed away in their band. But, you know, just to name a few, like I never got to see Stone Temple Pilots live. And I and I and that was like one of my favorites. And I and I should have went um, Soundgarden. Like I, I, that's another band that I, I absolutely love. And Chris Cornell, his voice, I, I heard him um i i'm always looking at youtube i'm always looking at music you know youtube videos and whatnot and he did this uh acoustic version of um uh a better days um mm. and i was just blown away that like wow his voice was just soulful it was like amazing like it sucked you in and um it was just great. The, the way that they played it, I'll send you the link. Um, I think yeah, I, 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 that it was great. And, and I love Soundgarden in general, not just his, his, his solo stuff, but just, um, you know, I, I, like, like I said, you, you never know what you have. Like, you'll be like, Oh, like, you know, I'll see him ag again. Or I'll see him again. Kind of like when I was picking up those vinyls, I had them in my hand. I'm like, Oh, you know, I'll, I'll get it the next time. And then it's gone. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to get. Um, I'm trying to think of other bands as well, too, that I'm kind of like kicking myself. Uh, Linkin Park, That's you know, like yeah. obviously, oh, yeah. you know, he, you know, he passed away. Um, you did. I mean, luckily, though, you got to see Foo Fighters. You got to see Taylor's Taylor. I mean, yeah. 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 Away. Like, I mean, I, I think and I, I got I got super lucky mm -hmm. because I was I think I only paid like maybe 100 bucks for those tickets. It was just yeah, I got two tickets. It was me and Peter uh, going to that concert. Um, so I got super lucky on that cause that sold out pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's like other bands. I'm just like, man, I should have like you two in their prime, you know I mean? I was yeah. like in 2000, oh, yeah. they were, they were still, they were still a hot commodity. They were still out. And, you know, I wish I went to go see them. Even when Van Halen was like, they, they came back and whatnot, even though they were a little bit older, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure like I heard that they saw, they still sounded great. Yeah, um, I mean, I seen them. I seen them once with Sammy and once with David Lee Roth, and both times were definitely worth the price of admission. I mean, as you wait, mentioned, no. yeah. So, are, are you a? Uh, this is David what was Lee asking Roth? you. Yeah, are you a David Lee Roth or Hagar? They made way more. This is the way I've always felt. They are Wade made a million, million, of course, better music with David Lee Roth. Um, but like, if I'm going to have some like tequila with somebody, you know, it's going to be Sammy Hagar. Cause he seems like a cooler guy to hang out with. But I mean, Van Halen, man, you're never going to take away those, those first albums and say that I just don't think, but you know, people do, there's a lot of people who do like Sammy Hagar more. I, I know you're probably going to say David Lee Roth based on the, yeah, based man, on I the gotta, questioning. Oh yeah. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta go with Roth, man. I, I 1984 you know, though, man. I'll wait is probably one of my favorite Van Halen songs of um, all time. I love that song. I, I yeah, recently I think I've been playing top. a lot of their stuff a lot more. Even yeah, I think from top to bottom, like even like their first two albums, um, from top to bottom, I, I I could listen to it like straight through. I mean, it, there's not one bad song on the both of those albums. Uh, no. If you wanted me to pick between like 1984 and their first album. That's tough, man. Because I mean, there's so many good good songs that just like I, I wouldn't know what to pick. But I I, I do love uh, uh, I do love both of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just like I said, it just um, you know, back to like the whole like you know 
kicking myself for not going to like certain like oh. concerts. I even like I wasn't even well, no, I was still like because uh or um what's his name? Um I always wanted to see an excess. Yeah. Oh. We I now I know where to come when I want to talk about all these great because I'm he I mean I could talk about in excess another half hour. I mean and in right. excess is an amazing band. Um very very for me they're probably in my top three of 80s bands of all time because they were a little bit of everything i mean they could rock you know and the keyboards weren't really at the forefront but man michael hutchins was just cool man you know he was really really cool he, and you watch, uh, if you ever get a chance and you're on youtube they got i'm sure you've watched it but they're also i think at wembley stadium and man to watch I everybody saw to just watch everybody singing those songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he's doing like Suicide Blonde and when he's like, yeah. I know exactly which one you're talking about. They actually, I think they actually did a, they redid it. It's like an 8K or something like that, or they redid like it now. So it looks super clear. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I thought he was a great, fr- like a great, great front man. Um, you know, obviously another guy who passed away, you know, young. So and that sucks. You know, like, like I said, just kind of getting back to it is like, you know, you never know what you have until, no it's well gone. until that's well that's that's why you're like take the chances when you can if you can yeah. um but back to that concert video man i always kind of get in trouble because like i always tell when like or i'll be watching it with my wife or something and all those girls in the front row and i'm like how awesome it would be just like in the front wembley stadium man you're like seven or eight beers deep man and they come out with like the devil inside and you're just rocking man that would just right. be, be a really really good time yeah. um real quick before we head out what's a band that you just can't uh what's a band or two that you just can't stand is there any bands out there that you just never have been able to get into or you can't stand oh, by your yeah three? no i have i have one and i discussed this with the 108 guys um i can't stand bruce springsteen oh okay yeah well hey i, I you can't know yeah, I don't, and like I said, no knock to anybody that that, yeah, that no. loves him or, or, or whatnot. No, yeah. um, I just, for some reason, I just, I think he's overrated. Um, just a lot of the songs. There might be a song or two that I I might like of his, um, but I don't know. I don't know what it is about him that I just, I just like. I don't get that people if people love about him. Um, oh, that would probably be like what. Yeah, that 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 would probably be the one that I that sticks out the most for me. Um, as far as some other bands, I can't think of off the top, but yeah, that Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> every time I'm just like, ah. I've I've spent the most honestly. There used to be a time period where I could tell you a whole lot of bands that I hate, but once I, what I've realized is that a lot of bands you got to have at least one song or two songs that are, as you stated, halfway decent. You know, so even probably the band that i would say i just never could get into and man i love def leppard i love motley Crue, i love van halen but man i could just never get into bon jovi i mean there's a couple songs but there's just something about it where it's kind of like that's kind of like the bruce springsteen for me um he, but you I, know there are a couple songs like run away like every time it's on the radio it's not terrible but it's not hard i don't know i say it's not hard yeah. enough but then i like like joy division depeche mode and all that stuff yeah, I love well, I love those, you know, Joy Division of, you know, uh all those like, you know, Pet Shop Boys and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Um the you know, just those are great bands. But yeah, Bon Jovi, I used to like him and then it, it's it, his music started getting overplayed to me. And I just got I just kind of was just like kind of brushed away like I'm just like uh, you know, he's okay. It, his concerts though, I hear there is yeah, a ton There's of something. ladies out there that love yeah, that love well, him. That's um, well, that's it. Too, he's like you know, that yeah, 80s, yeah. So it's not, that eighties yeah. background, man. It'll never go away. It'll never go away. <laughs> if you ever uh, get an opportunity, recently it's a it's was on Showtime. It's a Depeche Mode documentary called One Hundred One. It's from like their nineteen eighty seven or eighty eight concert. It's a oh, lot yeah, of yeah. it. It's filmed at the Hollywood Bowl, and like it's another concert where you're like man, I wish I could be in that front row. I wish I could be like, because I've seen um, the Pest Mode a couple times and great, great, great show. Yeah, they're um, coming back this year. Yeah, I know. I really would like to again. That's another one I would like to, I would like to to, to see. I've never seen, I've never about. seen them. So I think this is probably be one like I probably should go on and get tickets, you know, because like I said, you never know until like it's gone. I'm like, fuck, that's another band that I didn't get to see. So 
Um, I think I think I might have to go swing and get tickets this time around. But uh, thank you so much for joining me, my man. No, well, thank you for having me. I, I, I appreciate uh, you having me. Well, as we look into um, the future, talking, please, I please, talk, please, like I said, check I out talk music well, for hours. Last week, well, we'll definitely do it again. Next time uh, when we get together, we'll, brand uh, new episode. we'll pick check a couple bands week. and we'll go deep. Yeah, you know, all the like, weeks we episode. Went deep, please, like please, you said please, on Led Zeppelin, we could have went I hope you enjoyed tonight. Every I band that you mentioned. I really want to thank my guests oh, yeah. again. You all know, the same Sam, bands. And that's why. And Johnny for coming really to cool the show. I and love you. Know, please, one please, time, please, we'll definitely blast some of these bands in the parking lot at a Sox game. Next time we have a live jam. Oh, for sure. I want you to join me in the comments. Yeah. Join us on Eat some chips and salsa. Have some drinks. It'll rock. Yeah, have a couple bourbon. Yeah, bourbon all that yeah absolutely we're everywhere, we're yeah. everywhere. so please, please well uh please thank you my man and uh thank in. you everyone for joining reach us out uh, my thank name so much. is tony and everybody sugar bag please be safe you want to go ahead and um in those albums what you got to promote? yes 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 so i am the south side bum i'm part of the uh chicago sports bums we have a lot live podcast every monday at nine o'clock um so if you can follow us uh we keep on growing so and th- that's what i love i mean we keep on you know going on different podcasts and we're all growing together so this is what i absolutely love so again i appreciate you having me no problem my man ever since we uh first met up on the well i'll be honest with you i think it was sometime over the summer i uh somehow saw your picture and i'm like this dude looks cool and then oh here we are man here we are rocking and rolling and talking music and we were